Hey, welcome back to Fast Ship Forms there. My name is Tim Davies, and today we're back in the attack shack dropping truth bombs on your personal battlefield, helping you to win the wars you are fighting. And there is an SU-27 pilot out in Russia who needs my truth bombs because unfortunately they've gone and made a bit of an error and they've gone and slid themselves into an MQ-9 American drone over the Black Sea. And I'm gonna use that little model here, boom, to show you why actually it was just a massive schoolboy error. Yeah, so not every jet pilot is cut from the same cloth. Actually, to be fair, that's the sort of pass that a lot of my students would have made. And if I hadn't taken the control of them, then they would have probably have driven themselves into the other jet. Now I flew these airplanes here, trained students on these for about 20 years in the Royal Air Force. So I'm gonna use this little aircraft here, this little Hawk, and I'm gonna show you how what the SU-27 pilot actually did was just a bit of a mistake. I think what they're trying to do is send back the drone to the Americans just covered in fuel. So all the drone operators out in the States or whatever, wherever the jet, where the drone's gonna land, which would be Germany, somewhere like that, back in the UK, have got a lot of cleaning to do. It may also affect the sensors. Let's play the first of the films and we'll have a look at this particular type of aircraft. So I've stopped it there then, and we can see here from the pictures that it's actually an MQ-9, probably A drone, which would be known as the Predator B. Now it's got some upgraded stuff there. You can see there's probably some sensors additional on the base there, it could be some fuel in there. And on the wingtips, it's got these kind of fairings and that allows it to actually go longer, longer distance than otherwise uh, it would allow. Now on the back there, it's got a Honeywell turboprop engine, which gives it great range. It's got great lighter capability. The ceiling of this airplane, so how high it can fly is about 50,000 feet, but the kind of operates around about the 25,000 feet mark, which is well within the SU-27 envelope, but there is an issue with that, and we're gonna talk about that in a second. And also this top speed of this aircraft is about 260 knots, or about 300 miles an hour. And actually, to be fair, it doesn't cruise around out that, it cruises around a lot slower, probably in the 200 to 230 knot range. That is an issue, because the SU-27 doesn't like being at those speeds. Let's just quickly have a look at the film then when the actual aircraft hit the drone. Okay, so we've got two parts of the jet here. The first part, you can see it's coming in and it kind of feels as if it's very mushy. Like if you're kind of like in a rally car and you're sliding around the corners full of gravel, that's what happens when cars are very, very slow with a lack of energy. And that's what we're seeing in the jet then as it comes forward. We're seeing this kind of mushing out of the airplane. It's nose high, but it's still going down. He puts the fuel on though, and I think he's just really just flying over the jet to cover it with fuel. Doesn't seem to be the most experienced pilot. Another thing you may notice is that the nose is quite high, which means his visibility of the aircraft that he's approaching is vastly reduced. And this is a common problem that students have on the Hawk here that I taught on for many, many years, because if they do get it wrong in what we call a turning join, they lose sight of the aircraft that they're actually trying to formate on. In this case, this aircraft is trying to fly over the top of the drone. And what actually happens is he just mushes out and eventually, of course, he's gonna clip that drone. This first path, then he just covers it with fuel, probably just trying to get all the sensors a bit dirty, really lad, bad lad, bad lad. And on the second pass then, I think you can see the, the drone shake a little bit there. This is called kind of like washing out. We use this in tactics against helicopters quite a lot, but what it takes is energy. So he needs energy to go over the top of that and to pull up like lots of G, so like 400 knots pulls up here and the wash of the wing will just make that, make the drone do all that kind of stuff, okay? It's a bit of a, a bumping tactic. I think they used to call it thumping. Uh, now, but he needs energy for that. And of course, this aircraft here is flying pretty slow, probably 200 knots. Flankers, well, what is this thing, SU-27? SU-27s don't like flying that slow, and so of course he's gonna be very kind of dishy, very wobbly, and we see on the next pass then as he comes in, he's thinking, I'll get a bit close this time, lad, 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 click, 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 and the problem is, he does get a bit close, and I think he clips the propeller with a part of his aircraft, which could be the rear stabilators, if you have a look at those bits there. I'll just pause this so you can see the bit I'm thinking of. So these bits here that I've just put circled on there, I think these bits, uh, that bit specifically is gonna actually touch the prop and cause it to get bent. He is well out of shape there. This guy <laughs> is just poor piloting, I reckon, you know what I'm saying? Because you can't see anything. This jet is like this now. I can't see the camera lens from this jet here. I just can't see it, can I? Because I'm just, I use this in my flight school, by the way. So he, you just cannot see, he cannot see what he's approaching. So he's pulling, he's going, oh, I have some of that, bang hits the back of it, all right? Now he's gonna be fine, he's massive, but this MQ-9 is made of like paper mache, or whatever, for endurance, and unfortunately it suffered um, pretty badly there. So he's gonna clip it, see the camera go, meh, and uh, that thing's then gonna fall in the Black Sea, and the Americans are gonna scramble around to try and recover that thing before the Russians dig it up. I don't think it was intentionally, you see the, you see the bent prop there, 
I don't think the Russians are going to intentionally try and, uh, or they intentionally try to do this. I think they just literally messed it up, guys. Look, I don't want to take up too much of your time. All I'm saying is it wasn't intentional. I honestly don't think it is. You've got politicians like Lindsey Graham in the United States or Tobias Elwood over here in the United Kingdom who are looking for any excuse to escalate this into a West versus Russia war. I don't think that's a great idea, to be fair. So we're doing it on a proxy Thing, aren't we? And arguably, if the Russians had believed the US had blown up their Nord Stream 2 pipeline, then of course, this could be something that the Russians would think, well, let's try and get that back. This drone was worth 32 million. The repair package apparently for Nord Stream is something around 16 billion or something. So it's not really in the same kind of ballpark. And I just think the Russian pilot got it wrong. And also, if you want to know why the British government haven't sent jets to Ukraine, then by all means, click the link in the banner you see in a second, okay? And that will just show you a recent video I made about why our jets are staying at home, okay? Tim Davies, Fast Jet Performance.